Hey everyone, Steven here, and welcome to my little library of horrors. So, we've all heard the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover, but if we're going to be totally honest, we've all done it at some point in our lives. We picked up a book simply because the cover looked really interesting. Um, maybe we didn't pick up a book because the cover just wasn't for us, didn't do it for us. But um, either way, um, I think the cover is one of, if not probably the most important part of a book. Um, the title's what's going to catch our attention at first, but a cover is really what's going to make us want to open it up inside, I think. Um, I know for me personally, when I pick up a book and the cover really catches my attention, that's what makes me want to read the blurb on the back and perhaps open up inside the first chapter and see what the beginning page is like. Um, but... Um, yeah, so like I said, we've all judged books by covers at some point in our life. But, um, so what I wanted to do was point out ten of my favorite covers in my collection. Um, some of them I've read, some of them I haven't. Um, you know, with my collection, it's hard to get to all of them. But, um, these are just ten covers that I personally really like. Um, some of them have a nostalgia factor for me. Um, some really stand out to me. But, um, yeah. Um, let's get started. So, the first book I want to point out for its cover is definitely the nostalgia factor for me. And that's going to be Deep Trouble by R.L. Stein in the Goosebumps series. Um, I really love this cover. Ob obvious homage to Jaws. Um, but I think it... I, I feel like it has its own identity at the same time. Um... I really love, like, the, the kid's bot, like, head is the only thing missing from the picture here. I think that really adds to kind of, like, that whole unknown factor to the ocean where, you know, even while we're inside of it, our body is below it, we have no idea what's lying beneath it. And, uh, yeah, the shark is incredibly menacing. Um, I think it's really cool that they went for a hammerhead on that. I think that's really interesting. Um, very different. Um... Yeah, and for someone who's terrified of sharks, yeah, this this fits the bill pretty well. Um, so the next book I want to point out is um, by the author um, Rick Hautala, and it is the book called Cold Whisper. And I love this cover because it is a lenticular cover. And what that means is when you move it, the front image kind of changes let's try and get it on camera as best as i can here that glare is pretty bad let's see if i can get it here kind of kind of kind of um all right maybe not the greatest example but um yeah um but yeah, I really like that. Um, this was really eye-catching. Um, a lot of Rick's work is very eye-catching. I, I, he is someone that puts a lot of effort into his covers, and um, yeah, it, it shows pretty well. I've also I've never read any of his work, but I've heard his books are really good, and uh, yeah, so I think that's a case of the cover also speaking for the story itself. Um, yeah, I'm sorry this really did not come out well at all on there but um if you want to check out the cover i do have it up on my instagram page same handle little library of horrors um i do have it up there with both pictures both um covers shown so uh but anyway moving on um the next book i have is called uh is actually by rick Houtula. i didn't even realize that <laughs> but um another example moonbog by rick Houtula. Um, yeah, again, super awesome cover, very creepy, very menacing. Um, yeah, I, I think this is one of those examples of subtlety doing really well. Um, you know, there's nothing crazy really going on here. Um, I love the feeling of helplessness and, and, uh, yeah, I, I think this is just one of those covers that does a really, really awesome job of just really grabbing your attention like i like how the the kid's head is kind of more in the background which but it still catches your eye um yeah i i really like this cover um 
The next cover is very intense. I remember seeing this. I believe it was in paperbacks from hell I saw this. And uh, it was one of the first covers I knew I had to own, like, right away. And that is Slugs by Sean Hudson. And that is just an absolute beauty of a cover. I love that it's embossed. Very, very nice detail. Um, yeah, just, just a super, super awesome cover. Um, feels very, like, pulpy, you know, but I, I love it. I think it's awesome. I'm, I, I love pulp horror. It's some of my favorite reads. Like, I just, you know, sometimes you don't really want the heaviness of, you know, self-reflection and defeating inner monsters and things like that sometimes you just want a really good trashy novel where and this is definitely one of them i love slugs i think this is awesome can be a little slow at times but you know i st i still had a lot of fun with this personally so yeah great cover fun story definitely a good one really love that cover um this next cover is definitely another one where i think subtlety really improves the cover. I think it was just the right amount of detail to get your attention and really tell a story without needing a whole bunch of, you know, hoopla on the front, I guess. But um, the next book is Endless Night by Richard Lehman. Um, yeah, let me get in a little closer there. There we go. Yeah, I really love how you can just see the, the reflection of the kids in the machete. Um, and that it's like just embedded in that door. Just, I, I love the whole feel of the painting. I, th I think it's very, I don't want to say completely classic, like 70s, 80s covers. It has that feel to it, but with a little bit of the modernity to it as well. To where it, it it's really like it really pops and feels just more clear, I guess. I guess I want to say it's definitely clearer. But um, yeah, I love this cover. Um, love the story. This was my first Richard Lehman, and I loved it. If you're looking for a really fun slasher um, with a lot of twists, is but hit the ground running from page one. The action doesn't stop. Like I loved the story. And, uh, yeah, if you can get your hands on it with this cover, definitely recommend. Even if you don't get that cover, I highly recommend checking out that. Um, the next one is um, one that I really like for, again, this one's a, a classic cover. Um, I love the painting feel to it. I really like the older covers that were painted on canvases and then transferred to the paperbacks. But um, this one is... The Kill by Alan Ryan. And I really like this one because it's it's just got this really sinister feel to it, you know. Dolls on covers are always, you know, big hits in horror. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. Dolls just kind of give, give me the creeps. I know they give a lot of people the creeps. But, um, yeah, something like this is... I love the color scheme, too. You don't really see this kind of off pink cover like I, I really don't think I've ever seen it used in any other cover on any other book I've read horror or otherwise and I think it really pops out from the black and um yeah I really like a lot of the dark cover uh colors I know it could be a dark cover in general but um like I said I think the pink of the title really makes makes it stand out from the overall painting but um yeah, I really, really love this cover. Definitely love that one. That's probably one of my favorites. Um, so the next one I really, I really like because it's very unsettling. I think that's my favorite kind of horror is uh, being unsettled. I like to feel uneasy, like, uh, you know, something's not quite right kind of feeling. And uh, this cover really does that really well. Um, and that cover is Incarnate by Ramsey Campbell. I love this cover because I love house covers. I, I'm a huge sucker for haunted house stories in general. I don't think this is actually a haunted house story, but 
it's got that haunted house feel to the cover. Like, I love the eyes in the windows. It's super creepy to me. It just, just makes my skin kind of crawl. Um, I love the shadow on the steps. And it's, it, it's one of those covers where, like, the more I look at it, the more I notice that I didn't before. Even now when I was picking out the titles for, um, for this video, you know, I never noticed the kind of, like, little clouds in there that, that really contrast with the rest of the darkness of the picture. Um, I also didn't really notice that this part right here is kind of crumbled. But, uh, yeah, I really, I really love this cover. I think it, it, it's really eye-catching. Um, again, very unsettling, and this is something that is, it's exactly why I picked it up, because it just, it gave me that feeling of dread when I looked at it, and I love that. Um, this next one, this book is a lot of history behind it for me personally. Um, I'll probably save that for another video. Maybe when I do review the book, I've already read it once, but I kind of want to read it again to review it, but it's easily one of my favorite cover, uh, covers in my collection. Um, and that is The Feeding by Leigh Clark. There we go. Um, I really love this color because it's super bright, which I don't think you get a lot of with horror covers. I know they usually tend to be very dark, um, sometimes kind of grainy and muddy at times, but this one is incredibly bright. Um, it's embossed, very glossy, and like I said, the kids' clothes just tend to pop really well, like even just the grass down here, and even the really nice shading of the of the cave here is, is really nice. Um, and again, we there's that odd color. I don't even want to say odd. I want to say it's a unique color, that kind of outlining of the of the title there. It's like a, almost like an indigo, I want to say. But again, I think that's something that really makes it stand out from the rest. And um, yeah, this is easily one of my favorite covers in my collection. One of my favorite pieces in my collection in general, but not only for the story, but for the cover as well. I really love this one. Um, so the next one I actually just recently got maybe a month ago. It's kind of, it was kind of like a personal grail for me. Um, I just didn't want to end up paying like $60 for it. Like everybody wanted, ended up getting this one for, I think 15. So it was a really good deal. It's what I've been wanting again, since I've read paperbacks from hell. I haven't read the book itself, but I just, I knew I had to have the cover cause I loved it. And, uh. That is The Cats by Nick Sharman. And, yeah, that cover just honestly speaks for itself there. Like, it is so disturbing, unsettling, just eerie in general. Um, I'll probably get a lot of hate for it. I'm not a super cat person. They just kind of make me nervous, to be totally honest. Like, I don't hate them, but... I think their unpredictableness just kind of makes me nervous. And I think that's what really makes me love the cover to this even more. is just kind of that unnerving feeling I get around cats in general. But, um, yeah, this, this just kind of amplifies that times 10. Um, yeah, I love this. I think this is a great cover. I'm really happy to have this in my collection. And, uh, yeah, don't come for me. I don't hate cats. Don't hate them. So with all those down, um, it comes down to the last book. Um, this is kind of my newest favorite cover. Um, I just got this book in maybe three or four days ago. Um, I was going to wait till my next haul video, um, but I have two more books coming in that I'm waiting on before I post that anyway. So, But um, that will be in there anyway. But um, this cover I really love. Um, again, it was one I saw in Paperbacks from Hell, and just it really stood out to me, and I really loved it. And it's definitely my new favorite cover in my collection. And that is right here, A Glow of Candles by Charles Grant. There we go. And the artist is Jill 
Bowman, I believe her last name is pronounced. I apologize if it's not. But um, the only reason I know that is because when I got this in and I posted it on um, the Retro Horror Paperback Art Facebook group, um, she was actually a member. And I had mentioned, like, you know, I'd really love to get this signed one day if I could ever meet the artist. Sure enough, she was in the group and she was super nice and offered to sign my copy for me. So I just got to get it off of the mail to her. But uh, other than that, yeah, the cover itself is just... It's really beautiful, to be totally honest. Like, I I just love everything that's going on in it. it it's it's one of those paintings that I again gives me that sense of dread, unease, um, like something's going on here, but we don't know what. What we're seeing is not all that we're getting, and um, I I just I really love that. I and I think the attention to detail is incredible from. You know, the angle of the shadow to just the the drips of wax from, you know, the clown melting there. The hand in the background. I really love how the backdrop is a curtain, but looks genuinely like a wall. Um, yeah, I just, I absolutely love this cover. I think it's just gorgeous in every sense of the word. The way it looks, how vibrant it is, the color scheme. The feeling it gives me when I look at it. Um, I really, really love this cover. Um, I would honestly... Would even get like a poster of it and hang it up in my library. I love it so much. But, uh, yeah. So, there we have it. That was ten covers from my collection that I personally really loved. Um, yeah. So, that was it. Um... I appreciate you, everybody watching. Feel free to hop in the comment. Let me know which one was your favorite. What are some of your favorites that I missed that I may have in my collection or that I need to go and add? Or feel free to tell me that I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about and I'm better off picking off uh, pictures for fast food venues. But yeah, thanks again, everyone. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.